Hey guys, Epitome here. When I first heard about slide rules, my first reaction was probably similar to yours. And it's a valid point at that. In our current age, the slide rule could not be a more antiquated piece of technology. It lacks the speed, precision, programmability, and ease of use of a calculator. But as the memory of the slide rule resurfaced after an upload by Mathologer, my thirst became insatiable. As soon as I could, I printed out a cheap paper version to toy with. It's impossible to discuss slide rules without talking about logarithms. Logarithms, as taught in school, are, at least for me, somewhat confusing and extremely dull. It wasn't until I learned the original use of logarithms that I became interested, and once I learned that logarithms arose before exponentials, my interest was piqued. Because multiplying two exponential expressions with the same base has the effect of adding the exponent, the inverse of exponentials should have the opposite effect. The sum of two logarithms is equal to the logarithm of their product. John Napier exploited this property to make log tables. Since addition is much easier than multiplication to do by hand, a reference table for selected logarithmic values made fast calculation much easier. It is no doubt that the obtrusive notation that logarithms use caused them to be confusing to understand. How anyone is supposed to see that these three functions have anything to do with each other just based off visuals is unclear. But as with much of math symbology, it's unlikely we'll ever see a change. Simple addition, albeit without much precision, can be performed by using two sliding rulers. Place one above the other and slide to the number you'd like to add. Due to the commutative property of addition, it doesn't matter which rule you slide to represent which side of the addition. It's easy to see that each number on the top is the number on the bottom plus some constant. An important detail to notice is that moving the same distance across the ruler increases by the same amount. The fact that subtraction and addition are inverses should also become clear. Imagine, now, that the numbers on the ruler's distance between each other was defined by their height on the graph of a logarithm. Now instead of a set distance changing in an additive way, it changes in a multiplicative way. Notice that the distance from 1 to 2 and 2 to 4 are equal. This is because distances represent ratios on the slide rule. Using properties of logarithms, square roots, cube roots, and reciprocals are easy to find too. Square roots can be calculated using the R scale or the A scale, but it can also be found by measuring distance. Since the log of the square root of x equals one half the log of x, find the distance halfway between the start and number you'd like to find the square root of. Magic! Same works for cube roots and reciprocals. Since the log of one over x equals the negative log of x, you can see that the reciprocal scale on the slide rule typically denoted with ci or di is just the reverse of the normal scale. The magic of the slide rule, at least to me, is the understanding it allows. For many years I believed that all the calculator read out was necessary. I never knew that past a few decimal points are more precision than most applications would need, especially when natural errors in scientific readings can be a few percent. James Grime determined that 39 digits of pi are sufficient to measure the circumference of the observable universe with an error margin of the width of one hydrogen atom. Along with the reduced precision, the slide rule also requires the user to estimate the order of magnitude manually, making the is this reasonable justifications a critical step along the way. This way of looking at math by realizing the relationships numbers have destroys the black box of calculators, and I, believe it reveals the beauty in math. A slide rule is simple engravings made into celluloid coating on bamboo. A calculator's display can be modified to show anything, but the slide rule reveals the unchanging nature of math. When I wake up tomorrow, the numbers will all still be in the same place, the same distance from each other with all the same relationships holding true. It doesn't matter where I slide the center element, all I could read off of it will always be true. If you have the opportunity, I recommend asking older relatives if they have a slide rule. Even if you don't use it, it could change the way you see math forever. Thanks for watching.